May the 25th, 2016. Hyde in Kent. 16 miles south of Dover. 24 miles west of France. A light breeze has developed. Hoping it will die down, Stefan and frame builder Jason Rourke start building the airship, complete with a basket full of lucky charms. And this goes this way? Yeah. Oh, I don't remember. Yeah. You, you, you remember? Yeah. Guy has driven through the night to get here from his home near Grimsby. I'm okay, man. How yeah. are you? Yeah, I'm all right. That's the one who was going to work today. Yeah, I'm all right. All right. It just looks well with a lick of paint on it. It's all right. What uh, about that bit of breeze there that you can feel? Yeah, there's a bit of a breeze. Uh, it's really touchy. Uh, once it's okay, once it's not anymore okay, once it's okay, once it's not anymore okay. We will uh, start inflating around noon. Yes. Uh, to be ready for about 2 p.m. Uh, what you need to go is there. Right. <laughs> this way. You follow 24 the 24 mile that way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How are you feeling? Oh, I'm fine. You've been nervous? <laughs> no, no, I'm not nervous at all. Uh, I'm, just, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not pedaling this time, so uh, you've got a pressure. No, I've I got don't. a pressure, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. Hythe is currently in the middle of two weather systems, which is making accurate forecasting a challenge. Over there, we've got some low pressure. Over there, we've got some high pressure. We're in no man's land and it's fairly breezy. I mean, the air could do with a wash, um, but you can see, can you see the breeze? The air mass in a high pressure system sinks towards the earth, while the air mass in a low pressure system rises. The wind at the edges of the systems circulates the fastest, and the way the winds churn together makes for unpredictable conditions. What we're hoping is going to happen, that we're either going to have the low pressure move over and sit directly above us, or the high pressure move over and sit directly above us. Because when they're directly above us, that means we're in the center of the, the eye of the storm, as they call it. It's just peaceful, it's peaceful. So we've got to wait for that to happen. Until then, yeah. the team makes sure everything is built correctly. Yeah, perfect. Okay. <laughs> That's fantastic. But by mid-morning, the wind has increased. The official classification changes from a force two light breeze to a force three gentle breeze. <laughs> How much? Uh, <laughs> it's quite a lot. Go on. It's quite a lot. Oh, it's a nine, nine, ten knots. Ten knots. Yeah, it's three times the maximum speed I need to inflate. Right. Stefan uses a biodegradable balloon to check wind direction. So, France is over there. Uh, ideally, the, we have to see the balloon going this way. Yes. But, <laughs> so are you ready to launch? Go on, let's see where it goes. OK. And it's very strong, uh. you see? This is not really good. After an hour's wait, conditions improve a little and Guy is eager to proceed. The wind's not quite right, but it's getting late. It's not getting... Time's not on, on our side. So we're going to go anyway. We're going to go anyway. Um, but it is blowing a bit that way. <coughs> We've got Dungeon S over there, the nuclear power station. You see that? But don't worry, I'm all right. I'm not going to end up in the reactor. I hope not anyway. No, there's a firing range over there, so they'll sort me out before I get to the reactor. They'll sort me out. They'll sort me out. Operation Inflation swings into action. OK. Guy is in charge of filling the envelope with helium. OK. Too much too soon, oh. and the balloon may rip. Go down, go down. Patience is needed. It's busy in Adelaide all of a sudden, isn't it? After half an hour, the skies start to brighten. I'm not bothered about the sun, really. I just want the breeze to die down so we can go for it, so we can get to France. I've got my passport with me and everything, and everything. If I shout or if I say this, yeah. you stop. OK, I've got the hand on the knob. Yeah. 
Finally, after an hour, an airship the size of a bus is floating in mid-air. But a familiar problem is still present. The wind. Yeah, we're gusting, gusting to 10 knots. It's all right doing this. What you can see here, the TV crew, all the boats have all had to be fixed on the French side as well. So they're all over there and, yeah, waiting for me. It's filming fresh air, filming next to now. Stefan has a friend standing by at the landing zone in Wissant, providing weather reports. But then on the English coast, the 10 knot wind starts to calm down. Eight. Mm. A continual improvement is forecast, so the pre flight checks are made. It's all right. And Guy tops up his nutrition with some essential carbohydrates. I can have three, please. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ready for action? Ready for action. That wind has come down a treat, has it? Guy gets up to a convenient height so he can be towed across to the start line on Hythe Beach. OK. A bit more up, yeah. As he's led carefully across Prince's Parade, the swirling wind makes the task ahead seem daunting. Sorry, uh, the wind is just changing all the time. This is really complicated, and don't worry. It's weird, weird wind today. That's a lot of water, isn't it? Are they ready for us in France? Guy starts his first ever outdoor flight. A bit more. All being well, the next land he touches will be French. But the balloon's surface area is so large that even a light wind makes it hard to get lined up. Give more power and more angle on the right one. The wind, the wind has changed a bit. A bit on the left, progressive, slowly, slowly. Oh, no, 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 no. Try to go up. I'm trying. I am trying. <laughs> Try to pedal a bit faster. <laughs> Sheer leg power helps Guy to eventually make progress. Uh, this is good, you're doing well. The ground team now have to run to keep up. The speed is excellent with all these days. <laughs> the first good news. <laughs> Go. But then, just 100 meters from where he took off, a gust pushes the airship 90 degrees to the right and down. Stop pedaling. Stop, 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 stop. Guy's first ever outdoor flight finishes with Guy's first ever crash landing. I was just going along there quite nicely, really, and then suddenly I was going, I was veering off there, and then the next thing I ended up going that way, and Stefan says, stop pedaling, and I'm like, I didn't have coming into the ground with a bit of a smash, you see? It didn't break anything. But you can't account for the gust, you can have all the feel in the world, and if you can't see the gust coming. Unwilling to risk another unpredictable gust making the airship crash into the sea, all the team can do is wait for the next weather window to open. Stefan's experience is saying, call it a draw. This is, so you've never flown in conditions as bad as this? No, no. Right. We can't go to France like that. One thing that creates wind is temperature differences. Summer sun can make these differences large because the land heats up and cools down quicker than the sea. By September, some 12 weeks away, more equal temperatures should bring less wind.